uh, your school days in that you had to learn to speak German although you never went to German school. Yes, yes, we, we never went to German school and uh, uh, but all the children, so many of the children did go, they were all Lutherans here and, uh, and well, they all spoke German and all in their play and everything, it was all German, you see, and I, my mother was English, we spoke English in the house, but we, as soon as we started mixing with other children, well, we learned the German and we could speak it just as well as they could, you had to, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, at school, well, we, well, we had to speak English, uh, there they had to too, <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, but as soon as they were out of that, it was easier for them to speak German because they spoke it in the homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, they seemed to manage all right, but uh, they uh, our school was tougher those days. <laughs> it was. Mm. And what was what was life like uh, for your father in the Barossa Valley oh, in well, those days? He had to work hard, uh, but uh, I think the people were more satisfied those days. There wasn't so much uh, competition with one another, mm. uh, and uh, well, uh, there was a sort of a happy environment. They uh, they used to visit one another's homes, and uh, uh, they were more friendly, sort of, with mm. one another, mm. and uh, I, I, and they'd help one another. You know, mm. it, it was uh, really. I think it was a better life then, mm -hmm. uh, although there wasn't so all, you didn't have all these carpets and everything in the houses and that, and all the motor cars or anything, yes. but well, we didn't know anything about that, so we didn't miss it. Mm -hmm. um, it was your grandfather, wasn't it, who first came here yes. as a German migrant yes. to the Barossa Valley? Yes, yes, he was, he was here and... Uh, they lived out there, you see, out at Cramer's Crossing. We had a, a little two-story house and uh, a vineyard and that and grandmother. My grandmother, uh, from my father's side, she couldn't talk a word of, of English. Mm. And we had to sp speak German to her. Mm. And they could, the old people, most of the old people couldn't speak English. Mm. And they didn't try because they didn't have to. They got on all right without it. Mm. And, uh, oh, yes, I don't know. We, uh, when you look back, we had our, our good times too, and we had our hard times like now. <laughs> uh, what were the hardest times, do you think? Uh, well, when the crops used to fail. Mm. And then, well, then it was hard. Mm. Uh, we'd have frosts. Or, uh, then one year, the sellers wouldn't take the grapes, and they had to bring them home and tip them out and into the creek and uh, there was your living. Mm. But I don't know, we seemed to get pulled through. You simply wore your clothes again. And, <laughs> and we always had plenty of food and, and that and we were always quite happy. We didn't, uh, and as for, for, and at school, well, nowadays, of course, it was so simple then. Mm. They just had uh, simpler lessons than what they've got now, not such a variety. Mm -hmm. And uh, you read and write and arithmetic and sewing, and the boys, when the girls had to sew, the boys had to get out with the headmaster. He was a German chapel, and they had a drill, and they did have to drill too. <laughs> and uh, that sort of thing, but uh, oh, we, we had to do a lot of the uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, drill, the girls too, those days. We get out the girls and boys, and my word, uh, if you do anything wrong, you'll suffer for it. What did you do for um, for fun, for entertainment? Huh? What did you do for, for fun, for having a good time? Uh, when we were growing up. Mm. Oh, well, you see, there was uh, parties, uh, feather pickings. Mm. So you'd go... Uh, uh, if, the, if a girl was getting married, well, then they had to have feather pickings to make the feather mattresses, you see. And you'd get the whole, everybody'd be invited, and they'd have a long tables, and they'd tip the feathers out about this high, a long row of feathers, right, right, and you'd sit both sides and you'd pick feathers. And you'd pick feathers till 
till about half past eleven. And then they'd come along and they'd bag them all up. And then you had to go outside and, and play a few games while they put the food on. You see, it would be about one o'clock before we, uh, we had something to eat, but then there was so much to eat. Uh, it would always be four o'clock by the time we got home. And then when we finished eating, well, then we'd start playing games and dancing, you see. And then, uh, as I say, it's be four o'clock. Mm. So German we, dancing? Yes, polka and uh, waltzing and all that sort of thing, and square dancing. They, they used to do sort of square dancing too. Oh, yes, we, we had our fun. Mm. And uh, uh, then if there weren't, weren't enough for the speak, in a fortnight's time, they'd have another party <laughs> till they had the mattress for. Mm. <laughs> their feather bed, they called mm. it. Mm. And, uh, and other parties, they used to, uh, uh, like, uh, well, if there was a birthday or uh, before they got married, a shower evening, sort of, they'd have a big party. But they used to go all out. Uh, they used to, that when I went to, well, the, the uh, everybody came from the families, their mothers and fathers and the little children, and they was, they'd bed the children down in a room. That would be the old little children lying on the ground sleeping. You know, they'd have uh, bring blankets with them and that. And, and they could stay all night if they wanted to because the children were there. Mm, that's right. mm. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yes, it was a sort of a uh, all more homely way of going on mm. those days. Mm. Uh, they were more uh, all one. They had to be because there weren't so many people here. Mm. Uh, that's why it was. And... Uh, mm. was, it, was it ever difficult, do you think, to be... Uh, a German in Australia. Was that hard? No, not in the Barossa Valley it was. Because they were, well, the whole Barossa Valley was more German mm. than, 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 than anything Australia. else. The, in Tanunda, for example, the only English people were people that came in, in the banks, worked in the banks, and uh, some of the school teachers, some of them were German, uh, of German descent anyway. And uh, people like that that came here uh, and took positions and they could shift the post office mm. and that sort of thing. But otherwise, they weren't. And, if they, and I know that our minister, uh, a lot of those people, see, they couldn't go to church because uh, they would like to go, uh, but they couldn't understand German. Mm. So he used to give an English church at night. Mm. And oh, my word, they, they were very keen. They used to take up the collection and everything, you know, that, that was a, a great thing mm. uh, for them because uh, it meant they, they could do something like that. The, the Lutheran church, the yes. German church, seems to be very important in the oh, Barossa it Valley. Is. It is, uh, well, at first, uh, it was the same with the uh, Lutheran schools. Uh, they took such a hold because, uh, well, uh, that the Lutherans, they saw to all that themselves, and the government didn't trouble. That's the rule they're doing. They let them go. And uh, then afterwards, it uh, when uh, when uh, World War One came, well, uh, there was it wasn't so good. They simply closed them, uh, the Lutheran schools, and uh, the children. Then they all had a crowd. Well, and then see, they had a different way. Uh, I, I don't say that it was the right way. Uh, they had too much religion in the schools themselves, you see, and those children were no better than the others were, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, uh, see, that was quite, the, there was no uh, even religious instruction, nothing like that. Uh, it was quite different for, the, for those children, and they didn't take to too well, and the parents didn't like it either. There was bad feeling then. But, well, and then after, some years after the war stopped, they reopened the, the schools, but under a different standard, you see. They had to, uh, they only used to have, I think, a quarter of an hour, wasn't a half an hour, uh, like uh, religious instruction when schools open started in the morning. And, uh, uh, but, but they still uh, used to just have anyone to teach. Mm. Uh, but uh, they cut that out now, uh, later, here now, they've got to have the uh, 
trained teachers, mm. just the same as other schools. Mrs. Traeger, can I ask you how old you are? Yes, I'm in my 86th year. <laughs> you, you've obviously seen tremendous changes then in the Barossa oh, Valley. I have, yes. When I think of it, I think, well, I can remember, you see, there weren't any motor cars. If people, if we'd go out to go to work, we used to have sometimes a church service at night. We'd be walking to church service, you'd hear these horsebacks coming on the road. We used to run through the fence because there were no street lights. We lived out at the crossing about two miles out because you couldn't see them coming there right over the top of us. That's what we thought anyway. <laughs> and uh, see, uh, in the same with the uh, buggies and that, they'd have these little candle lights on with them, not, not much better than nothing. And, uh, and then the first motor car, well, I ran through the fence. <laughs> oh, dear. It was uh, the doctor here. He had the first motor car, a little two-seater. And I, he, I think he was a bit frightened of it himself. But uh, anyway, uh, that was really something. And, uh, uh, yes, but people just, oh, people, that, what an idea. Uh, never, that'll never be that we would drive around and things like that. <laughs> Uh, the horses will always stay, and that's what they didn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 